Hey, good morning. Good to see you. Thanks for being here with us. I'm Charlie Arnold. We got the guys here, Max Kellerman, Stephen A. Smith, and gentlemen, I know you've heard this phrase before, third time's a charm. And after three postponements due to a COVID outbreak, the Ravens and the Steelers finally set to kick off this afternoon. Now, according to sources of ESPN, had two more positive tests come back before the team left for Pittsburgh yesterday. This marks the 10th straight day of positive COVID tests, which includes at least a dozen players, most notably reigning NFL MVP Lamar Jackson. In his place tonight, or today rather, under center, we've got RG3. So Stephen A, can the Ravens upset the Steelers with RG3 at quarterback? Hell no. Absolutely not. I mean, when I'm looking about the Steelers, I don't give a damn that it's the AFC North. I don't give a damn that it's the Ravens. These are the Pittsburgh Steelers, the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers. And it would be a crime. I repeat, a crime. A crime. If the, if the Pittsburgh Steelers, regardless of the three delays and the postponements to this game taking place, if RG3 comes in straight off the street as far as I'm concerned because we haven't seen him play in years. If this brother comes in and beats this Steelers, that defense, excuse me, it would be inexcusable. And oh, by the way, I will bring up the Dallas Cowboys in this regard. When that cat Gary Gilby came off the streets and almost beat the Steelers, you know what? That was your mulligan, Pittsburgh Steelers. You didn't know anything about them. You slept on them. You took the game for granted. You almost lost. So the fact that that backdrop exists from just a few weeks ago should have you alerted enough, combined with the level of annoyance for the three postponements, which Max himself alluded to, where it's supposed to motivate you even further, and then you're going to play this game, and RG3 is the quarterback instead of Lamar Jackson, and the Steelers with that defense, with Micah Fitzpatrick and Stephon Tewitt, and, and, and TJ Watt and the crew, and y'all going to have problems with RG3? I'll tell you this, Max, and I'll give it to you by saying this. If the Steelers have problems winning this game with RG3 being the quarterback, and I mean no disrespect to RG3. I'm just talking about his inactivity and what have you. I like RG3, okay? But he hasn't been playing. All I'm trying to say is if you have trouble with RG3 and that Ravens squad with no number one receiver, by the way, if you have trouble with them, I don't want to hear a word about the Steelers being in the conversation of being a legit Super Bowl contender that could potentially knock off the likes of a Kansas City Chiefs or somebody like that. No. You got to handle your business against an RG3 in order to be in that kind of conversation. That's where I'm at with it, Max. Let me, let me channel my... Let me channel my inner Stephen A. Okay, ready for That's this? That's impossible for you. You are to do. being very disrespectful, Stephen <laughs> A. Smith. Okay. You are being very disrespectful to the Baltimore Not Ravens bad. and to Not this bad. rivalry. This is Steelers, Ravens, brother. They are going into this season. They played 44 times in this century. The record was 22 and 22. The point differential, everything down the board, down the line was just about as even as it could possibly be. This mm -hmm. is Raven Steelers. All bets are off. And by the way, you can read it right there on the screen. You know when the last time RG3 started a game? It was the last week of last season. Last game of last season. Pittsburgh, Baltimore. Baltimore had everything locked up. Number one seed locked up. So they didn't, they didn't start anybody. Like, Pittsburgh was playing against the Baltimore backups. Now, Pittsburgh didn't have Ben Roethlisberger, but they had everyone else. Baltimore didn't, and they started 30-year-old RG3. See that? Week 17 versus Pittsburgh, under 100 yards passing, passing 50 rushing yards. What, what we're not showing is he didn't pass for much better than 50%, 11 out of 21 completions, right? But Baltimore won the game, and they won it by more than two touchdowns. It was 28-10. So I understand that Roethlisberger, it's not just like, well, Roethlisberger better be able to make up 18 points. Of course, the offense is at an advantage because the Pittsburgh offense puts them in good field position. I get all that. But Stephen A., they beat them by more than two touchdowns with their backups and RG3. So, like, you could say whatever you want about, well, Pittsburgh better do this and Pittsburgh better do that. Even if Roethlisberger puts them in a better position, Pittsburgh is correctly the favorites. By the way, they also playing with a chip on their shoulder because of all the postponements, I'm sure. But to sit here and, as you would say, just summarily dismiss the chances of the Baltimore Ravens with a quarterback who beat this Pittsburgh team the last time he faced them with mm -hmm. backups in this kind of rivalry, that's ridiculous. Of course 
the Ravens have a chance to win this game. Well, first of all, first of all, it's blasphemous for you to call it ridiculous. I would remind you, Max Kellerman, that in 2000 and since 2016, four seasons have taken place, or really three and a half. In that time span, RG3 has thrown 26 passes for 255 yards. 26 passes for 255 yards in the last four years. And that dude is supposed to be able to do damage against these Steelers? Please. There's nothing ridiculous about it. There's nothing asinine about it. There's nothing, there's, there's nothing to even think about here. The Steelers should, do, the defense should dominate the Baltimore Ravens. Now, if it's a close game or what have you, it should be because the Baltimore Ravens defense was able to hold the Steelers offense in check. That should be the reason. Instead of running the football with James Conner, who I consider to be average, excuse me, and I got Claypool and I got Washington and I got Juju Smith. Houston, Deontay Johnson, and the crew. I go five wide. I'm Big Ben. I'm flinging the football all over the field. If Baltimore has a way to stop that, God bless them. But as far as I'm concerned, this should be the equivalent of what the Steelers just did to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Something along the lines of like 27-3. to three. If the Baltimore Ravens score a touchdown, a touchdown offensively, the Steelers should be ashamed of themselves. That, to four, to 26 no. passes in four years? Come on, man. Come on, this defense You're should handle their business. You're pointing out why the Steelers are favored. They are correctly favored. But to dismiss the Ravens, the Ravens can play defense. I'm dismissing the Ravens' the offense. Last year, when you go back to last year, was that a motivated? Was that a motivated Pittsburgh team at the end of last year? Highly motivated Pittsburgh team. They win that game. They're over 500 for the season without really? Roethlisberger. That's really? why they used all their starters. Like, everyone started for Pittsburgh. Yeah, everyone started for Pittsburgh. Uh, it's a rivalry game against the uh, Ravens. They're playing for a better than 500 record. The, they already had, had their vacation plans. Up. They didn't start anybody. They're ready. It was They're, RG3 listen. and a bunch of backups, and they won against Pittsburgh starters. Yes, Roethlisberger makes a difference. Yes, the Pittsburgh defense this year is even better than last year, and that makes a difference. First of all, if you've designed an offense around Lamar Jackson, there's a reason you have Robert Griffin III on the team as your backup quarterback, because he can approximate Lamar Jackson. Of course, he's not as good as Lamar Jackson anymore. I mean, when RG3 was a rookie, when he was, when he was at his best before his injury, uh, he was, you know, Lamar Jackson 1.0 or, or, or Michael Vick 2.0. Next. He was the super fast quarterback who could also throw the ball down the field. So, yeah, he's kind of the perfect backup for this offense that has Lamar Jackson and when last on the field, he beat this Pittsburgh Steelers team, Stephen uh, A. Will you stop it? Roethlisberger better be able will, will to make up 18 it? points. Well, first of all, just because you get – listen, listen, listen. I, I understand yesterday you started off – Monday you started off the week. You had a nice crew cut haircut, looked about 10 years younger and all of this other stuff. But that doesn't give you the right to gauge and gauge and selective amnesia, Max Kellerman. If you recall last year going into that last game, week 17, the Buffalo Bills had already clinched having – you know, controlling their own destiny for that wild card spot so the Steelers all their hopes have essentially evaporated yeah they might have started them the last game of the season but they were pretty much out of the mix they weren't going to the playoffs they knew it and that was that in the end what it comes down to is this nice. I'm not talking about the Ravens collectively I'm talking about the Ravens offense the Steelers defense should run rough shot over these brothers it shouldn't even be a contest against that Baltimore Ravens offense they shouldn't score a touchdown they shouldn't score a touchdown well, you, by the way, Stephen a., I've you got, got a haircut to even or at least a shape up. You got a line up at least. Someone lined you up because it's looking crispy today. Well, thank you. So, you know what? I appreciate We, that. we like that. We like looking crisp. That. Hey, uh, Stephen A., I have appreciate something. I have some breaking news that's going to even help to strengthen your argument about yes. the Ravens offense. Go we ahead, now Chuck. know, according to a Jamison Hensley source that just came in, uh, we, are, we now know that J.K. Dobbins and Mark Ingram, both running backs for the Ravens, not expected to play tonight despite being eligible to play. So the Ravens offense going to be looking oh. uh, a little weaker as a result so of you're that. Telling me, so so you're telling me on top, of, on top of the situation at the quarterback and on top of the situation not having a real number one receiver, they don't even have a running game tonight? I'm telling you right now, if the Steelers give I'm up telling. a touchdown, last year. if they give up a touchdown, if their defense gives up a touchdown to that offense, I'm going to be ashamed. I'm going to be ashamed of them.